Hey guys, Kelly again for Vance Outdoors, and I want to cover how to pick a holster for your firearm, because if you plan on carrying your gun, whether it's concealed, open carried, or if you want to carry in a purse or a bag, it's important to have a good holster that protects your firearm, not only from being scratched and banged up and things like that, but also protects that trigger guard so it doesn't go off accidentally. Now the one thing that people seem to forget about when it comes to carrying a gun in a holster is actually buying a good belt. A uh, good belt will have a little bit of rigidity to it so that when you have the holster located on top of it, it's not going to fall or move around or do anything like that. Uh, if I buy a $2 uh, Walmart belt, my holster might find itself working its way around my waistline, uh, or it might find that if it's a heavier gun, that it's pulling away from my body. And that's something that I don't want, because especially if I'm concealing it, that's going to make concealing it even harder. Uh, but it also gives the possibility that my firearm might fall out of my holster, and that's something I really don't want. From there then, in terms of actually picking a holster, you want to pick what construction the holster is made out of, uh, and that's kind of personal preference. Uh, several different styles that holsters are made out of, uh, something like this from Galco is made out of leather. Uh, another option that you'd have uh, from like Uncle Mike's is a nylon holster, which is a nylon material. Uh, and then your third option then would be something like the CNG holster, which is made out of Kydex. Uh, Kydex is basically a hardened plastic um, that keeps its rigidity. Uh, it's also a possibility depending on your manufacturer or style that you're choosing. When you choose a holster, uh, something like this, which is a leather and Kydex combination, uh, might work best for your needs as well as work best for where you plan on placing the firearm. Now when you are picking a holster, the biggest thing that you want to remember and the biggest thing you want to stick with is making sure that you have a holster that fits exactly to your gun. Uh, the reason being we want a holster that fits that is that we don't want it to fall out accidentally. Uh, if I get a holster that's too big, it might make it too difficult for my firearm to be drawn properly. Um, so that if I do need it in a situation where I plan on defending myself, it's going to make it a lot harder. Um, it could also, like I said, potentially fall out. Um, if you do a material like this, which is Kydex, um, Kydex is going to be form-fitted specifically to your firearm. This means that if this holster fits a, say, a Glock 19, it's not going to fit something like a 1911 uh, or a Sig Sauer or anything like that. It's only going to fit that Glock. Uh, because I have a smaller size Glock, to give you an example here, if I try to put it in, if I move it around, it's going to wiggle, but the biggest thing is, is that if I turn this upside down, you can see my gun falls out immediately. It has no retention on it whatsoever, uh, which is not a good or safe thing to be. So when we are talking about retention and making sure that it is form-fitted to your firearm, uh, this is another style of Kydex holster. Uh, this one is form-fitted directly to my gun, and you'll hear if I push down on it, uh, it's going to what we call retain on top of that uh, trigger guard right there in terms of being able to hold it directly. That click means that it is in there, so you can see I have a little bit of wiggle when I move it back and forth, but the big thing is, is that if I turn it upside down and shake it a little bit, my gun is not going to fall out of there. So if I find myself in a tussle, if I'm moving around, or even doing things like getting in and out of a vehicle or sitting and standing, uh, my gun will not come out of that holster, which is something that I really want. I want it to stay where it's at. Something like the leather holsters or the nylon holsters are going to be a little bit more of a one-size-fits-all option for you in terms of this will potentially work with several different kinds of firearms. So if I have one that's either hard to fit or I have one where I plan on maybe throwing it in a bag or a purse, I'm gonna want something that's gonna be like this. Uh, I can still choose Kydex as an option. It's all real personal preference to be honest with you. Something like this with the leather holster, uh, it is gonna be a little bit more form fitted so I'm not going to be able to fit potentially either a bigger or a smaller firearm like you saw with my Glock 43 right there, uh, but it's going to have a little bit of retention to it and it's designed to kind of hold based off of friction alone rather than physically holding on to something. Uh, now in terms of products and what they're made out of, with leather holsters, they hold up. Some people like them because they feel really great against your skin. It doesn't feel like you're carrying a large hunk of plastic or anything like that. Uh, but leather holsters do wear out over time just because it's made of leather, you're, especially if you're doing a lot of training where you're drawing consistently in and out of your holster, uh, you might find that you wear it out faster. Whereas something like Kydex, uh, because it's a little bit more rigid, it only holds on a certain uh, number of points on your firearm, it isn't going to show as much wear and tear, and it's going to take it a little bit longer for it to degrade. 
Now with holsters as well, your other options are going to be uh, whether you want to put your holster inside the waistband or outside the waistband. Uh, and that depends on whether you want to just open carry or if you plan on conceal carrying. Um, outside the waistband can work, especially in situations like winter where you might have many layers of clothes on. It's easier to get to. Um, it's very easy to just then have on the outside of your hip, just like this. Outside the waistband holsters also work really well if you do a lot of training with it, or if you plan on doing something like competitive shooting, this will hold your firearm, make it easy to get to without maybe breaking any rules or anything like that. Now an inside the waistband holster is going to do exactly kind of what it sounds like. It's gonna go on the inside of your pants, on the inside of your belt, uh, so that it makes it a little bit easier if I were to take my shirt and throw it on over top of it. It's gonna be much easier to conceal, uh, but that might also mean now I'm pushing in certain areas and I might not be able to put my gun in certain places uh, based off my holster or even the size of my firearm. Uh, so it's something that just kind of depends on what you're looking to do with it, depends on what firearm you're trying to conceal. Now something like this Galco, which actually has both leather and Kydex, this is a little bit wider as you can tell than something like our nylon holster here. Um, this is specifically designed to be held in a particular carry position on your body. Uh, whereas a holster like this is going to work well for a carry style like what I do, which is a appendix carry, where it's held right here in front of my body. Uh, this holster won't work quite as well in terms of being placed right here. This is actually designed for more of a four or a five o'clock carry. We're kind of back here towards my kidney. Um, it does a little bit more of a wrapping action with having that flexible leather to it. Um, and makes it a little bit more comfortable to hold back there than to say if I were to try to use this same holster for that carry position. So when it comes to holsters, it's really going to come down to personal preference and what you like. Uh, but ultimately, make sure that it covers at bare minimum your trigger and your trigger guard right here. Um, a lot of people find themselves in bad situations because they'll get something that doesn't cover that trigger guard. And especially if you're concealed carrying it, if you find yourself bending over or going somewhere and that trigger's not protected, you can find something going through it and it discharging accidentally. That can lead to some not so great situations. Once you've picked out your holster, make sure you train with it. Take it to the gun range, practice with it at home, take it through a training class. That way then you know exactly how that holster is going to work. You don't want to find out that you can't get your gun out or that you can't put it away at the most inopportune moment. It's another thing too that if you're going to be a concealed carrier, it's quite a possibility that you're going to have boxes and drawers and closets full of concealed carry gear because you're going to find something that might work in one situation and might not work in another. So don't be afraid to have multiple holsters or if you go and buy a holster and it doesn't work for you, buy a new one. Work with it. Practice with it. Train with it. Know what that thing is going to do. Don't just accept that it's going to happen because you could find yourself in bad situations like having your gun fall out or having somebody take your gun, or even getting to the points of where now you leave your gun at home. Thanks for watching, and make sure you check out the rest of our videos for first-time firearm owners.